Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to World at War Comics. My next special guest is Mr. Shang Xin. Shang, thank you so much for being with us today. I cannot wait to dig into Symphonic Verses, all the crazy things that you got going on. I've been watching some of your, your older interviews and some of your, uh, your website. You are cooking, my friend. You got all kinds of amazing things happening. But before we jump into that, how are you today? How's everything going for you? Oh, I'm doing good. I, I appreciate you having me on the show. Um, you know, thank you very much. It, it's uh, it's an honor to be here and be able to to talk with you and, and uh, you know, meet more uh, potential fans who aren't familiar with the series, you know, yet. And and, you know, uh, I'm, I'm excited about that. So, yeah, I, I certainly appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, as we start to kind of dig in, can we go back a little bit and maybe give us a little bit of the history of how this story came about, um, the passion behind this story? Um, because my understanding, it was quite a few years ago. Um, so this is not something that you just cooked up in the last couple of months. You've been working on this for a very long time. Can you kind of talk about um, the history of this story and how it came about? Sure. So um, I created Symphonic Verses 30 years ago. And the first publication of it was in 1996. It was black and white. Um, you know, back then there wasn't print on demand. It was, it wasn't like it just, there weren't a lot of options for things. And so um, I, I had to staple the pages together and trim it myself. It was awful. It was just, it was really bad. And, and, um, but I had, I had been working on, uh, other stories for as long as I can remember. Uh, I, I have been a fan of fantasy and, and history. And um, I, I grew up in a blended family. So half of my family is Asian. And so I grew up in household where I was exposed to the cultures that uh, a lot of the world today is, is now getting familiar with. And so these are things that I, I was able to be very fortunate enough to experience uh, from such a young age, you know, gr growing up. And so uh, I always enjoyed mythology and just these great tales about these heroes and, and the kind of adventures that they would go on. And so I had begun working on stories here and there. And then I started to work on a story about these two uh, twins and uh, that was what was the foundation for uh, the series was originally called Destiny and the, the very first iteration of it. And uh, then a couple, a couple like weeks turned into months and then the months started turning into years. And, and I was just constantly writing and working on it. And um, one of the themes that I always found important was like this really human element inside this this great fantasy world you have these people with these incredible abilities um but then they deal with these kind of impossible situations and i thought about really great literary works that i i always appreciated like hamlet um like the iliad these things that really they tell such a unique perspective on uh character on uh, the hero's journey, you know, certainly things like Joseph Campbell and um, just so many important elements that are needed to kind of tell that story. But you have to have other elements that also bring it to life that way. And so um, about, I want to say about two years into it, it went from destiny and then it became symphonic verses. And then it just, you know, that's just what it's been ever since. And a lot of symphonic verses is based around um, musical theory. Uh, I I I love classical music. Um, I love operas. Uh, so really, and I mean, symphonic verses really is. It's like an opera uh, that's that's dark and it's it's beautiful. Um, and it really it 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 kind of very elegantly but very dangerously for them pulls on these threads that that kind of interweave what is happening with aspects of, of love and hate and indifference and redemption and forgiveness. Is evil really evil? How is evil created? 
what motivates these things, what what pain drives people to do these things that justify to them the actions that they're taking. So those are a lot of the things that are going on. It really, it's a tale really about people who are victimizers because they were victims and then they victimize other people because they, you know, in, in this pursuit of what they believe to be right and to be just. And then you have the few actual good people who are not corrupted by uh, the things that, that happen. And so um, just as, as time went on, um, it, it just it, it just really took a life of its own. It just really it just came to life in this this whole unique way. And and then you know, 30 years later, here here we are. Um, it's the main storyline itself is 930 chapters, wow. and that's not counting the side stories, the spin-offs, the there's all these other tales that I wrote, all these other stories that they all take place in the same world. Um the world of symphonic verses, it's called Levi Samanos V. Mm -hmm. And Levi Samanos V, it means to be under the influence of sleep. So it's as if when you read it, you're literally in that place between drifting to sleep and being awake. It mm -hmm. exists right in that twilight of that of those realms. That's that's where it lives for, for readers. And so um it, you know, everything just kind of happen uh with it continuing on and and then here we are <laughs> here we are so growing <laughs> up in the household that you did grow up in what were some of the inspirations that you were exposed to early on that gave you this passion for this style of writing this style of fantasy um that has now become come symphonic uh verses um yeah so i i grew up uh reading like uh manhwa um like wuxia, watching, you know, of course, classic kung fu movies and, uh, you know, fantasies and medieval kind of things, uh, you know, great uh, Greek tales, uh, you know, Clash of the Titans, all of these these types of things. And 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 then as you dig deeper, you dig into these um, these stories that are so old. And there is a reason. There is a reason that even though, you know, all these hundreds of years have passed yet how many people are still reading about achilles mm. and about hector how many people are still reading hamlet and romeo and juliet and looking at these you know great characters i think about tybalt i think tybalt is one of the greatest literary villains that that has been written in in history i mean look at how he look at how he introduces himself in in the series i mean it's just it's this it's so many great it's so many great aspects to that so those kind of things and and i just always had this love of things that were not earth you know the, the ideas about dragons and swords of power and all of these you know just amazing things and it was always like in school i was always my head was in the clouds all the time i would draw on my test I would draw I just on everything and I couldn't help it. And and so it, it was just like all of these things and these cultures that are so much older than than where we live. And it's there's just so much to take away from it and so much that can be appreciated from from those things. And so that was really what that's what helped to mold um, that that fuel for creativity and that that I that that desire to to make things like that um and you know and it still does to this day i mean it's still the same things that that feed me that that keep me keep me going that way hmm. that's amazing let's talk a little about the artistic style that follows this storyline because it's extremely unique um and it sounds like it the, the way that you came about this art style was really important because it really mirrors and matches the story you were trying to tell. So I don't think a, a normal Western style of like comic book art would do the story justice. So you kind of created a very unique style about how the art is going to really uplift the story. Can you talk about how you chose that style and what it has meant for the story in general? Sure. Um, so in... 
Manhua, uh, a lot of the art is very painted. If you look at that, you look at a lot of um, like your even your especially European comics. Um, it has a more painted style to it, and I I never was really fond of seeing the ink lines and the color inside of it, and it you know and and I understand the aesthetics of a. A superhero outfit, I guess, it doesn't have to be complicated. It's it's just kind of this very uh, unique uh, silhouette of a design that just maybe has a few things here and there, and and I get that. Um, but I felt it was really important to tell the stories that I wanted to tell, and and I didn't see that. I didn't see, and and I don't mean that in the sense, you know, that I wanted characters to, to look like me. Yeah. No. I wanted to just see the types of stories that I felt were really, you know, engaging and exciting that way. Like, um, you know, you would look at things like the original Voltron, look at Thundercats, look at all of these. So I would take inspiration about how I wanted it to be, but I wanted to have my own unique approach to their clothes, to the way their world is. Uh, I really am a very huge fan of the Baroque period of uh, Rococo. It, it's so the ornate details, just the way that it is. It's so unique. It's so fascinating. And I actually have, I have pictures of the characters from, you know, gosh, probably 26, 27 years ago in these Baroque style uh the fashions and 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 so for me it was like okay i love that but i want to have my own version of that um i love castlevania uh you know igarashi is a genius he's one of the you know him and uh, uh akira toriyama and tetsuya nomura and hideo kojima and wing shing ma and hong tae kim and tony wong and all these amazing it just made people that i have you know, looked at all my life and, and studied and, and followed their work uh, for so many years because they're just so talented. And and so I started to create just that world has its own unique look. It has its own, it just is what it is um, in, in that sense. And so I wanted the art style to represent the the heaviness of the story, um, the the emotions, the impact of what goes on. And I wanted it to be more than just this kind of 2D, look, I wanted it to really be an experience that readers could look at and they could say, I've never seen anything like that. And that was that was really the drive behind it, um, was, was to show, uh, show people things that they hadn't seen that way. Um, not, not like that. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. Now, when, when you look at uh, your style of art and the storytelling, you would consider that uh, more of a manga? Like for no. a Western, like how 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 does a Westerner who has grown up with just traditional, you know, Western comics, how do what do we call that style of uh, writing and art that you have been working on for the past 30 years? Um, I it, It's not it's not a manga. Uh, yeah. Manga is black and white. Yeah. And it's, I mean, and the, 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 the artists who do it, they're very talented. I mean, the, the professional mangakas of Japan, I mean, they are, they are experts of their craft. It, it is not a question of at all of, of, of that. I, you know, um, I tell people all the time, I don't know anything. I just try to keep understanding what I'm doing at the present. Mm. That's, that's it. I can't, I can't do anything more except try to keep learning and understanding what can I do to keep growing, to improving, to, to trying to understand these, these concepts and present them in a way that is right for, for readers. And so um, symphonic verses is really just its own thing. It, it's not, it's not a Western style book per se, like in a traditional comic sense, but it's not a manga. It's, it's really just kind of this, um, you know, fantasy, world that that just kind of it's its own thing yeah um if that makes sense yeah yeah i, I hope that does um, i mean as much sense as you can make of it i i think because when i look at it i don't know what to relate it to um you know what i mean i don't, I don't have something on my shelf that i say oh that's more similar to this 
Um, and I, I don't know if that's what you were trying to go for at the beginning. Um, but that's, I think what you got, which is amazing, right? Because it's super unique. It's, it's very, um, beautifully aesthetic. I mean, it's gorgeous. The colors pop. Um, and like you said, it's that in between of like reality and sleep. I, I don't know what you call it. It's not dreaming, right? Because you're asleep when you dream, but it's somewhere like you're getting close and whatever that looks like, maybe this is what it is. I don't know, but, um, that's, that's very accurate to that's how I describe it. I mean, it really is just this, you're, you're, you're just right in between that spot. That's where this, this world exists for readers. And, and, um, and it's their, their world is so vast and, and, the, the physical planet of Levi Samanos V itself, um, like to give it perspective, we know that Jupiter is in our immediate solar system is the largest of the planets. Their world is 3000 times the size of that. Oh, wow. So when you talk about a massive, massive, dense, you know, existing force of life and power and all of these things. And within that, I mean, there are all of the genealogy charts, there are maps, there are the languages, there are dialects that are spoken from various characters who come from various countries. They are distinguished by the, the where they're from, that is the race they are. And so it's not a thing like, oh, someone is black and they're this or they're that and they would, no. You could have dark skin and come from the Glass Kingdom, which is in the east, and you would be considered a citizen of Glacius Glendafios. That's how you say Glass Kingdom in their dialect. They, they're they Elcyon, and so they speak High Elcyon. And so in that language, it doesn't matter what you look like. If that's what you are, then you are a citizen of that empire. It's just that simple. And so... Uh, the main character Adonis, he comes from the Noctum Imperium, which is in the north, and it's the greatest of the the kingdoms in the north. It's actually the only one that is left and that has survived. And um, and so, if you come from where he is, he's a Vothic Dracosan. A Dracosan means the sins of the dragon. So they are the children of the dragons. That is how they that is how they came to be. And so there there is just there's all this stuff that's there for readers to be able to engage with and you know um and a lot of the sets that i've released people get the lineage charts they get the maps they get the soundtracks you know you get the soundtrack with every purchase it's just a digital download i mean but it was you know the music was actually composed by uh michael uh roberts who he worked on um arrangements for Castlevania, um, arrangements for Nintendo. I mean, wow. so just an extremely talented guy. And so, you know, there's just all, of, there's all this stuff that for years, it's just, it's been part of this experience of what Symphonic Versus is. Um, and I, and it's just, you know, the goal is just to share it with people. Yeah. Well, you've been extremely successful over the last few years specifically and I want to kind of talk about that success but I think it's really important as a creator that we kind of talk about that journey of over 30 years because my understanding specifically because I think what you were producing especially 30 years ago was just so unique that people just didn't know what to do with it right um, so when we talk about those first, you know, 15, like, I don't know what the timetable is, but there was a lot of rejections um, oh, yeah. you received. Can you talk about what that experience was like and then how perseverance really and your belief in what you're doing has gotten you to this point? And I think as of late, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I feel like you've really been recognized lately specifically about this amazing creation that you have. And there's all kinds of different things that you're doing that I want to get into. But can you talk about that first, I don't know how long it was, but that perseverance and that that, uh, that rejection that you received that you've overcome? Sure. So uh, yeah. and it, it at first, it's it sucks. Yeah. It is not it is not pleasant. It does not right. feel good. Um, but I, I had started sending in submissions and, um, you know, right away it was, it was rejection and this rejection and rejection. And it just, 
and and it it was the first like 15 20 it was is heartbreaking like it's just it's brutal and and um and then i just kept I just kept doing it. I just kept submitting. It was just like, okay, well, I'll just try again. And so I kept doing that. And that the impact of it being disappointing, it no longer had the the impact that it did. It was like that that goes away, that kind of numbs to you're just like, okay, and then you try something else. And you and so altogether, uh, I got 174 rejections. And I try to get on with everybody minus marvel and dc of course i mean they don't do that kind of stuff but right. i went to everyone caliber image even uh two years ago mad cave all these i went to all of them and no no one uh wanted to uh wanted to give it a chance and so um that you know when you're a creator, your projects are like your kids. I mean, I don't have kids, but it's like a yeah. you you love it. You're it's 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 a part of you. You are, you know, you're consumed by it really. Um, this this if that's what you really want, if this, you know, these are the things that you really want to do. And um and so to have it met where it's it's um uh, it's rejected and it, you know, people can be harsh and people can be, and, and me personally, I believe, I think about my art teachers who I learned from, they were brutal when it came to pointing out what I did wrong. And it's not because they were bad people. Part of it was a cultural thing, but then part of it also was so that I could learn to do it the correct way. That's the point of, you know, you have to, you don't start as an expert. You have to start as being someone who doesn't know. And then you learn, you learn. And over time you develop these, these skills. Um, and, and so, you know, if people are creatives and they're wanting to do that, just know you got to take the hits that come with it because they're going to come there. It's very rare. You get the instant success. Sometimes, you know, people will say, Oh, look at image, you know, it started out and boom. But what was the difference is that the, the, look at some of them were already coming from other places where they were already established at this hierarchy of uh, notoriety and, and they had worked on very famous properties. So they weren't coming into the that game at the ground level. They already had a, uh, quite a few legs up. And, and then that made it easier to kind of create this platform for the this idea of, of a comic book beyond the confine of of the giants that are you know so you know Americana part of of storytelling and so um with with all the rejections with all the the things you you have to just you have to endure it and you have to if this is what you you love and there are many things that are going on I didn't set out to do these things I didn't set out to specifically say i want to see a b and c i just wanted to tell my story and i hoped that someone would like it and um yeah there were a lot of bumps along the way a lot of hiccups a lot of failures and disappointments and setbacks and you know more things not going in my favor as i would have ever liked you know but but again, if you if this is what you love, you have to take the hits that come with it. And you just you keep practicing and you keep refining. And it's funny, when I was getting rejections, it wasn't because it was written bad. It wasn't because it was drawn bad. It was because it was different. That was that was the whole premise as to why they would not accept it because they could not they could not wrap their minds around i believe the concept of what what is this this far more grander thing than than it appears to be yeah. and um even here's a, another example so one of my rejections it was comic related but not in that sense mm -hmm. um i went to diamond distribution i was like hey i want to 
you know, I want to get my book, get it in the catalog, get it to, to shops. So I, I submitted it and it, you know, it takes a while, you know, for you to, and I didn't hear anything. And then like, I want to say it was the next year they had got back to me and they said, <laughs> and sometimes when I, I say this, people think that I'm, I've had some people like, well, is that what they really said? Or are you paraphrasing? And I'm like, no, no, no. I can show you the, I screen captured that email as a reminder it, it, that it it proved, it proved two things. And, and th this is what I mean by that. They said, you know, we are going to politely decline your series. And I, I get that. And for me, I always feel like when it's in, when it's about business, mm -hmm. if you have to apologize, that that to me is an indication that maybe there's something that didn't get the opportunity that it should have. Because you don't say sorry. If, you know, if I bump into somebody, I'm going to say, hey, sorry, oh, my, you know, my bad, man. I didn't mean to bump into you. That's, you know, and other people might see it differently. But I, I kind of take that from that. But then, too, they said, we're not picking it up because we are unable to compare it to anything on the market. So because, like what you said yourself, you yeah. can't really compare it to one thing or the other. Yeah. You said you can't look at your shelf and say, oh, it reminds me of this. So what I set out to do, I did achieve that in the sense that it is something that is so unique to itself. It can't be um it can't be compared to something else on the comic book market. Mm -hmm. And that's what Diamond, you know, it's what they told me. And so I was like, okay, I mean, <laughs> I'll just figure something out. But that, you know, again, a rejection that yeah. comes with it, but you just have to keep at it. Yeah, right. Right. Well, I mean, obviously that paid off because if I'm not under, if I'm understanding correctly, um, you've sold 6,000 plus copies of your comic book. We were just talking about before we hit the record button, you're sold out waiting for another shipment to come in. So, yeah. you know, again, when we talk about perseverance, especially as an independent creator, um, if you really believe in what you're doing, you just got to stand firm because yeah. uh, you've proven that there is a market for what you're doing. And although others might not understand that market, you obviously do, and you're reaching those folks, right? Right. I mean, and it it really is. That's the thing is, you have to just stay true to what you know is is accurate. You have to exactly. just stay stay focused on on that. And um, you know, I don't use any crowdfunding, um, and I've sold almost. I'm nearing seven thousand physical copies. There are no digital versions of the book, none that exist. Um, Two reasons. I'm not really into digital. And then also, uh, if you notice, I never show page after page after page after page publicly. Mm -hmm. I so I show snippets of panels yeah. from the series. I will sometimes put a quote from a character with a picture of their face, but I never just show everything. And the reason is why the the reason for that is because I don't want to take away the experience from the reader for when they open that book for the first time and they're like, whoa, whoa, what is happening? And then they realize it is not what it appears to be. And it is far more than what they maybe had assumed it it would be. And so um, that, that I found to be the best way to deliver the series is that there's always an air of mystery about about what's happening yes i have the synopsis you know yes it's about uh it's a dark love story about a, a prince who you know sets out to find this foreboding power because he's lost his wife and he's trying to bring her back to life so that he can have what he loves he can be regained by the things that bring him joy in life i mean who of us would not try to do anything it took to bring the people that we love back to us what would you do what would you face if yeah. you knew i could alter time itself and and change things and so 
that is the very human aspect of it. But he's forced to choose between two evils, you know, not good and bad, but an evil and a greater evil. So it's really how can you do what's right when you're only doing what's wrong? And and so just in that presentation itself, those are elements of the story, but there's so much more that's happening. And so that's why when it comes to the books and it comes to uh, where I how I sell it and how I market it, it is done in a very unique way so that it doesn't give away all the things that are going on because I want the reader to say, wow, I've experienced that for myself, not someone spoiling it for me. Or I went online and, and every page was right there and I saw everything. That that doesn't help. And so that has, that has been a huge um, help in the success of the series. And at the end of the day, yes, this is my series. These are my characters. I created it. But the readers are the real heroes because they are the ones who saw the value of what I was doing and they turned it into something else. Wow. And that, so, and then you share that experience with them as, as a, as a whole, it's like a, you just become one big family. Uh, and, and everybody, you know, I, I have people message me and they'll, is Prince Adonis, is this because of, and it's like, it's interesting, but I can't tell you because you have to read for yourself. You have to see where, where these things go. Um, but that's that's been that's how these kind of integral things with it have happened and would have helped with with selling that, you know, that many numbers of of copies. And, um, you know, and the goal is to get it into as many hands as possible. Wow. Amazing. Well, let's talk about today and all the things that are surrounding the symphonic uh, verses, because uh, from my understanding, right, we have um maybe an anime coming. We might have some action figures. I think you yep. said you have four issues out, but you're working on five through eight right now. Did yep. I get all that right? That is correct. Yeah, that let's all... walk into that because that's like super exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like what, what creator doesn't dream of having their, their property turned into animation and then having action figures and here you are and you're doing it. So can you kind of tell us about how we got to this point and what fans could expect? Sure. So um, after all the rejections, because we have we have to kind of go back to that, because yeah. that's, that's what led into this other stuff happening. I was like, um, I don't I don't know what to I don't know what to do. And, and so I was like, well, I'll just start my own label because I can't get someone to publish it. So I'll just have to do it myself. So I started my own company, which is Phantom Blade Productions. And I am like, I'm going to Put it out i'm gonna just do pre-orders and see what happens so as i'm putting advertisements out online for uh for people to just see you know to try to garner interest in the series and mind you this is this is a series that is not connected to anything yeah. it is not like someone could say oh that kind of reminds me of this a b and c and that this is kind of like that series it just is this thing. It's not that it's not connected to anything else except itself. And and so I put it out there. And one day I get a message and a gentleman messages me back. And he was like, what is this? And I said, oh, um, that's the main character for my my book. It, it just, you know, he's the main character. He's a, a, a prince from this mafia like kingdom where where his family has ruled and all this stuff. And he's like okay, I'm going to give you this number and I want you to call this number at exactly 3 p.m. on a Monday. And I'm like, what? And I'm thinking, is this guy like maybe an art dealer? I don't know, because, you know, Symphonic Versus is done in a way that you could just take single panels and frame it like, you know, a piece of art you would hang up somewhere. Yeah. And and so I said, well, okay. And I'm not sure what what exactly is going on. So uh, he emphasized 3 p.m. Do not be late. I was like, okay, I, I won't. So I checked the time to make sure, okay, my time versus where they, where that time is at. Monday rolls around at 2.59 and like 30 seconds, I start dialing. Phone rings, he answers. He's like, you called on time, good. 
<laughs> and he said, okay. Then this is literally how the conversation goes. He crazy. said, okay, <laughs> you're here. Uh, I'm here. The board of the directors are here. The president of the film company is here. We're going to put you on speakerphone. You have 30 seconds to pitch it to us. So go. And mind you, in my mind, I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like a joke, right? Like I you're... 30 seconds just to get my mind right on this. Right? I'm like, 30 seconds. I was like, wait, what is happening? So I'm like, okay. So I go into the pitch and I just like, you know, this blah, blah, blah. and then they're like, okay, hang on. And it's an audible. Like, I mean, I can hear them, but I can't hear what they're talking about. And I'm I'm sitting here and I'm like, this is strange. Like, I don't know what's happening. I still feel like I don't know what's going on. And the president of the film company gets on the phone and he's like, hey, you know, I like it. We're going to turn it into a TV show. And I, I will never forget this. I took my phone away from my ear and I'm like, OK, who is like pranking me? Like you guys really went out of your way to like this is like an elaborate joke. Yeah, I give you credit for the detail, but this is a joke, right? Like. I couldn't get a publisher to publish it. 124 and, rejections and one for rejections, that. right? And then the president of a film studio yeah. getting on the phone to say, "I like it. Let's turn it into a TV show." Wow. And I thought, this can't be. This cannot be real. And sure enough, it was real. It is real. And so. Uh, they send the contracts and they're like, you know, we'll give you, you'll get Hollywood credits per part you play in the show. Uh, I'm one, I'm an executive producer on it. I'm one of the lead writers on it. That's cool. And TV show takes a long time to make. It is not a overnight thing because sometimes people will say, well, You've been doing this a couple of years and where is it? And it's like, if it was that simple, everyone would have, it just, and it's like, it's not there. I, I, this is a world I'm still very much I'm trying to understand because I didn't, you know, I didn't go to film school. I didn't, I didn't set out to do this with the intention of having a television show. I was just like, I just wanted to tell my story and I hoped that someone would like it. Mm -hmm. And so we, in the very end of 2018 into 2019, production starts. Um, and I can talk about this now because it, it's it, originally the show, the deal was set for Amazon. Mm -hmm. So we start production where we got all the stuff for the trailer. We, you know, go through the, the sheets and the animatic and you know before you do all the the rigging and i mean it's just so many things to it and i don't do that but the 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 animators and stuff like that and so next thing you know the covid hits whole world shuts down yeah. just i mean it just it, it was just this thing and it, it just it just like it seemed like it came out of nowhere so everything shuts down all the animation studios all the so that put a that put a nix on that production deal because it was like you can't invest tons of money in something as everything is shutting down and then not knowing how you can recoup it not knowing how it will fare in the market when there's no market right now everything is just so everything so it was like okay everything was just done at that point we had to go back to to you know level zero and so then after that um a few years went by and um you we had the strike we had the all these things that impact the way so many things are able to be done and they're allowed to be done and and just all of this stuff and so it was like okay uh in the interim of that let's work on the other things that we can work on so i was being that i i have a little pool with the the show um some as as its creator and i said well i want to i want to you know start 
the the storyboarding process again and you know and so the executives at the studio were like yeah you can do that that's fine so i went to japan to to find uh you know people who were experts at what i needed you know for for this and um the team that is doing the storyboarding now um they used to work at square enix they actually worked on final fantasy 14 oh, wow. so that that tells you the caliber of talent that is attached to to the project um uh, one of the most recent ads to it was uh one of the animators for jujutsu kaisen oh, and wow. attack on titan so he is now part part of the project so the storyboarding is still going on um you know certain things it is it is animation is not like it's it's not like just typical art because you have to you have to think about the camera movements the light mm. the all these things and so it's like yes in art you think about that to a, a degree but here it's moving it's not just a panel and then here it's a dick it is it is something that it's continual and and so they have kind of been like giving me free education on things to think about how you look at a scene and it's incredible because here are people who have worked on one of the most popular franchises in in gaming history and and i mean they don't work there anymore but they did and so but yet here they are and they're helping me to craft this the way that it should be and so i i was allowed to write and direct the trailer for for the show the the executives told me i could do that and so um we're it, it was just like this crazy this crazy experience of things that I, I never would have thought i never would have dreamed of happening that way and then i was like music wise um i love two steps from hell um you know and they for for anyone who's not familiar with them they are composers who have done everything from the harry potter trailers the x-men the you name it they have worked on just about every major trailer series anything big and epic they have been attached to it uh, i reach out to them and i'm like hey you know you guys i love your music big fan um always I, wanted to work with you and they messaged me back and they were like oh yeah sure these are the people you contact and you know sounds great you know it, and i'm just like <laughs> things that that i never thought would happen and here they're happening so the tv stuff is going that way so then it gets to okay um the books yeah so let me um let me show you so there are quite a few things like okay this is Consequence Zero. It's a prelude edition. Okay. It's 32 pages. Now there are four, there are four different books of this, and each one just gives you a little bit of what is happening in the series. So this is this one. This is the Consequence 2 prelude. Um, this is the Consequence 3 prelude. I'm sorry, it's a little oh, that's good. it's kind of hard to see Beautiful from part, man. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Um, this is the Consequence 4 prelude. And so once you, you know, you can start off with those because it gives you a little bit from each of the main graphic novels. Mm -hmm. But if um, you want to start even with something less, there is this, which is the Overture edition, um, or which is really the, the Phantom Horology edition. Um, and so the way this art is, this is exactly how every page, every panel, wow. this is how it looks. This is not AI. This is not... I have been I have been doing this for many many years, and this is how it looks. This is this is what it is. So it's not any of this generated nonsense. This is all designed, hand drawn, to bring it to life. Um, so yeah. this this is an example of what the series looks like. Yeah. And so this is a that's a twelve page you know like preview. Now if that or if you want to just jump right into the the deep end, here is consequence one, which is 202 pages. And this is the first book. This is where everything starts. Now, this is the ultimate edition hardcover, um, which actually these are the pre-orders for these sold out. So, but they're coming out in May. Um, but so this is the hardcover edition. 
Um, it's got, you know, all the stuff there. And it really, I, I mean, the quality came out excellent. Um, this is Consequence 2. So this is the, the next book. And if you notice each of the books, there's a rose, there's a skull. It's this real ornate it's 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 dark it's very gothic but it's it's baroque it's it's you know all of those things the covers help tell the story about what's happening so this is this is book two um this is oh where's book three okay i thought i bought it over here i did not okay by my personal copy i didn't bring it i thought i did uh, yeah. uh so there's book three uh -huh. now then there's consequence four which is, this is the newest one, which uh, released on the 27th of March. It's 72 pages, no, 74 pages. Uh, it's only hardcover edition for, for this one. It's not a softback. So, um, and again, now the design motif has changed, but this area with the roses, uh, the calivarias at the top, that will reflect differently for each release for books five and six and seven and eight, it will continue to change, but tell the story as the first as the first three set did. So there is that. Um, this is the Consequence Five Prelude, um, or again, it's a Phantom Horology edition. Mm -hmm. I just say Prelude because then it's yeah. you know that might be easier to explain, but. That's this one. And of course, um, again, the rose and the roses are important to the story. They represent the houses that make up Adonis's noble house. So the three roses make up the three separate houses that make up the house of Latreculus. And that's that's the you know symbolic representation of that. Yeah. But there's that one. Um, and then this is the Phantom Edition uh, just by itself. Um, see the art yeah, behind you, right? That's the art from um, behind you, above your head. Yes, yep. yeah. That yeah. that actually, uh, the Consequence One collector set, it comes with that wall scroll. Oh, very cool. So that that scroll comes with it, and posters and all that stuff. And this one, it talks about um, the studio. It talks about the company. How you know how long I've been doing this? You know my my kind of trek to get where where I'm going that way. People kind of have an understanding of that. So that's the book part. Um, so then the other part, the action figures. Yeah. <laughs> that was that that was the next thing where it's like when you're developing an IP, you need you have to have merchandise that you that you have that that is available. And it's, you know, it's not just the comics, it's not just having posters and bookmarks and stickers and you have to really you have to build the brand to really encompass all of these things in in every market so it was like okay i want to get the action figures done so i find a company we talk and they're like well we've never done anything like that but maybe i think we can let us see the designs and the designs are complicated because the art is complicated it's it's meant to be it's not you know, if you very much sometimes just to sum up things, I never like to compare things to other things. I think it does a disservice to to the work of that creator. Like if someone came to me and said, hey, this is the thing I made up, I would never be like, yeah, that just looks like the Punisher. Yeah. No, that's not a no. If it did, you would want to encourage them to maybe, yeah. you know, think about some more design choices. But Overall, it's like um, you you just you accept it for what it is, and and so they were like, well, let's let's see what it is. So then I'm like, okay, let's do this. Let's look at the you know getting the toys made, and and they're like, okay, we can do this. So they make the first one, and it took almost a year to get the very first one done from just the concepts that I sent them to the first prototype molds they were making um details that needed to be changed and stuff like that it, just so many things so then i get the final product and this is the main character this is crown prince adonis neos latreculus and this is his uh armor that you see him in um 
it, this wow. is one six scale. It is like, I think it weighs almost two pounds. Like it is a, it's heavy. It is a lot of plastic. Uh, he's got the royal uh, crest here of the dragon because um, the house of Latreculus, they, uh, dragons and death are kind of like things that they, I guess you could say almost revere, like almost worship in a, in a sense um, in, in their culture. Uh, so, but it's got all the, the markings uh, on his coat. Um, I mean, his boots, they got the roses on there. They got them on his, on the armor, on his knee pads. And, you know, he comes with multiple hands. He comes with five swords. He comes with a dragon shield, power effects, phantom power effect, an ignis effect. Just, in ignis is a Latin for fire. So he, it's a, it's a fire effect. It's a power he can wield and it's, it's part of his phantom power. And so, they made, and it was just like, I saw it. I mean, I nearly had tears in my eyes when I saw it to think something that I created 30 years ago is now this tangible object that I can hold in front of me. And so uh, I was like, okay, really let's make, let's make another. So they were <laughs> like, okay, so this is, this, this is the second main character. This is Princess Sapphiro Sawir Florentissima. And this outfit that she's wearing is her imperial attire. What is unique about this is although the dress seems plain and this, you know, a really exuberant collar that extends from the back, uh, the dress in the graphic novel, uh, it has these enchanted waters that come from it and move with it and float around it, but it oh. doesn't get anything wet. So in the graphic novel, you see that, well, the manufacturer managed to craft plastic pieces of like water that when you sit her on the and she sits flat, you can place that around her as you pose it so that it gives the effect like in the comic book of how that dress is. And so that's why this in itself is, is not as detailed, but that enchanted water is. And you look at her, she wears white, Adonis wears black and gold and it's very symbolic of the the darkness that is consuming him uh in his quest for for revenge his quest for redemption for trying to save his wife all of these things and sapphiros she is full of such hope she is full of such promise um and her and adonis share a rare power that only the two of them have which is they can behold celestial light with their eyes and only they can have that ability. And even when they look at each other, the world around them looks different because how they can see one another with that with that power. And that's a, that's an element to the story. It's a it's a very big part of what goes on. Um, the next one they made is this is Countess Concerto Maestro. Now she is Adonis's mentor. Um, she helped raise him. She is a very powerful warrior. She's an alchemist. Um, she's lethal. She is deadly, very highly skilled, but they captured, they captured all of her just details and her armor and the dress and her boots, everything that you see. I mean, they did such a great job getting her figure so just so detailed and she comes with her her uh her swords and she has a, a shield and like there are other things that she'll come with with her display um when her figure releases uh next is this is florette and florette is a lieutenant commander who uh is uh in service of the shadow knight and the shadow knights are some of the main villains in the series, and they're led by uh, their emperor. His name is Gaius Ipetus. And so the Shadow Knights all wear masks. Um, Gaius is the only one where you can actually see his eyes, but his mouth and his head, everything else is covered. All the other warlords, they're covered. But she, she has a her spear that she fights with. It is, it's like... When she holds it, the top of the spear is about here. Oh, wow. um, 
the the weapon and she's been trained to kill people like Adonis and Sapphiro. So she's extremely lethal. She she's very dangerous and she has a uh, a dragon battalion which is that's what they call it for for her elite squad um and the shadow knights that serve under her. Mm-hmm. And so that's one of the villains and then the other villain is this is and this one is really heavy. This is a Shadow Knight swordsman. Oh wow! Now the Shadow Knight swordsman. Uh, if you think Star Wars, you think the Clone Wars, mm-hmm. the battle droids, the clones. That's what these are in the sense of there's just millions of them, yeah. millions and millions and millions. But as the classes change to become the elite classes. The helmets change, the color of the armor changes, and then those, they're very few because they're really high-skilled warriors who who are, you know, inside the armor. But so this is the Shadow Knight Swordsman. Um, he does come with his dual swords, and they they can be removed from the sheath that, so that he cool. has on his back. Um, and there's actually, it's like a type of, I guess, like pleather or yeah. something to kind of like represent like the leather guard that they have here for the armor um and these just came out so so beautiful it's yeah, just detail detail so impressed by the work that the manufacturer has done and so this figure will be coming now how they'll be delivered um you won't get them in a normal like blister packaging kind of thing so the action figures oops, sorry there no, you're go. good yeah this is what they're going to come in, is this box. And, uh, of course, that's the cover to Consequence 5, but that character is integral to things that happen. Um, and it's just, it's one of my favorite images, and so I thought that appropriate for the action figure box. And so this is the company logo. That's Phantom Blade Productions. Now, the toy division of the company is called Phantom Blade Kaiden. And so that's actually the logo for the toy division of the company. So they'll you'll get this box. The box is 13 by 13 by 10. And then within this box, you'll get two other boxes that are um, one is 12 by 12 by five. And then the other one is 10 by 11 by four. And so and no, it does, but it, it gives you enough room right up to the top to be able to pack both of them in there. Wow. And the I mean, it's even got art printed on the inside um i don't know how much of that you can see yeah it's gonna be expensive it's that oh yeah these are i mean all this stuff it's it's uh it is not it is not cheap to (laughs) to get it done but it is worth everything and so Uh, these boxes are displayable they're collectible yeah they're collectible (laughs) that's a collectible Uh, box right there And the comics come in a box like this, but it's different. The comics actually come in that gold box that you see sitting right there. So you order comics, this is that's what they come in. They come packed in that kind of collectible box. And so the action figures, the the anime, the the comic book, I mean, it's just it it is its own thing and it keeps growing, it keeps expanding. Um and because I don't have distribution, I just sell books directly to comic shops, to you know uh, buyers who who get it. Um, the toy line is already listed on Walmart's website, so next it will be on Big Bad Toy Store as well. Um, and the first when I did the pre-orders for the toys, they sold out in under 24 hours. The whole first set, they were just they were gone. God. And so they're making more. It just takes time. It takes time to get it made. Um, and and so that that's the next step is is to you know keep getting more made. But um, th- that's where everything is at at the moment. Um, is is all of this stuff in the thirty years, the, all the setbacks, the failures, the all the rejections, everything that happened. It ended up leading to all of this. And it wasn't what I, you know, I didn't, again, I didn't set out to do this. This isn't what I, it just, it happened. And I'm so grateful. Um, and I'm I'm so appreciative that every day, I mean, I work from home. This is what I, this is just my job. I, I wake up, did I come into my office? 
and I draw all day or I'm, I'm writing or I'm talking with the animators or I'm, you know, going over things, I'm packing up books. It, it's just what I do. This is, this is just my job. And, and, um, and I'm so fortunate and, um, you know, this, yeah. So this is where everything is. Congratulations. I mean, 30 years of blood, sweat, probably tears to get to this point. <laughs> get to this point, Shank. I mean, congratulations. Well deserved. Um, like I said, I, I have not had the opportunity to get into the story, but I have been on your website and the art is just next level. You can stare at it for a while and probably see things that you didn't see um, at the beginning, mm. right? Just because of the detail. Um, yeah. But it's it's dark. It's beautiful. Um, and all I can say is congratulations. I can't wait until you get your uh, your next uh, load of uh, books in because I, I really want to dig into it. I love fantasy um, in general. Um, and it, I feel like a very fantasy flavor to this, which I think I'm going to dig personally. I know it's more of a dark fantasy. Like, how would you how would you um describe is it just is it a dark fantasy is that a good way to kind of describe the story or is that enough it, i mean in in a way it it is it's kind of like here okay this is what i mean by an example um mm -hmm. of not comparing things but just to give you an idea of what i mean if you took final fantasy like as a whole just as the i you know these great great iterations of each game and you took castlevania and you know that kind of Bram Stoker's Dracula, that that those elements of love and 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 darkness and the things that drive, and you took Hamlet and you kind of <laughs> that is a that is kind of a way to just kind of say those kind of themes. If yeah. you you can appreciate those kind of themes, that's what that's that's where the story goes it it follows things in in those veins where it's it's very much again it's fantasy but it it's it's the human part of it yeah. but it is there is a darkness to the things that are happening and to the the things that are going on uh with with the characters and there's so much lore there's so much world building um it, i mean it, there's just so much and there are so many things I never say publicly that yeah. readers have never seen or heard. And it's because I, I can't spoil it. Yeah, and yeah. some things they just, it will just show up in the cartoon. They'll have to wait to, to see it that way. But um, yeah, but that, that's a, that's a good way to describe it. Very good. Now, Shank, Oh, there's my dog going off. Uh, <laughs> <so> <laughs> door probably, you know, how excited they get about something like that. <laughs> the thing, for people who are not um, familiar with the uh, universe and this, these worlds that you've created, where can they go to find out more and to purchase um, when they are back into stock? Like your website, your social media. Um, I know you just mentioned Walmart with the action figures. We know we were talking about Amazon. Can you kind of walk us through that? That way people could find you. Sure. So um, the and the the comics are actually on Walmart as well, but they're sold out there. So I've I've got to get everything restocked um, for that. But uh, you can go to symphonicverses.com, um, and the series is spelled X I M P H O N I C V E R S U S. Mm -hmm. um, so symphonic verses. If you put that into Google, it all pops up right there. The IMBD, uh, the Instagram, the TikTok. Um, the Facebook, they all have symphonic verses in the title. There is a page for Phantom Blade Productions, my company. There is a page for the toy division, Phantom Blade Kaiden. Um, and, you know, and I, I, I have a social media manager that I hired to to work with me because it's just so many things. I can't I can't do it all. So I'm like, I, I need help. And so she's so talented. She's so good. Um so she handles a lot of that for me so that the day to day I can just concentrate on this stuff. But that's where you can you can find it. Um, and you anyone ask questions or they comment or they need something. I always respond to fans. Yeah. So uh, I can always be reached. Um, you can message me through the website, through the social medias. 
Um, and, and I will always make sure that I, I get back to you. That is amazing. Well, I don't know what else we could add to an amazing conversation. Um, all I can say is congratulations on your success. Well deserved. 30 years in the making. And here we are with an animated series. We got action figures. You got more books coming. Um, and, and, and you're doing this for a living, which I think anybody who has that passion wants to get to that point. And you've made it, my friend. I know it's been hard to get to that point, but, uh, and it's not over, right? There's a lot more that you still want to accomplish, which oh, yeah. Uh, it's very inspiring. <laughs> We're just getting started with, <laughs> with everything, but yeah, but I thank you. Thank you for having me on. I, I appreciate it so much. I really do. Um, it's been great. It's been really great talking with you. Um, and, and I hope that, uh, I hope that viewers um, like it. And then if there's things they have questions about, you know, like I said, please, you can, you can reach out to me anytime and I'm, I'm happy to, to discuss anything that uh, they'd be curious about for the series. I love it. Shangshin, thank you so much. All of the websites and the social media and everything will be in the description. So we're going to make it very easy for people to find you. Um, but thank you so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. I hope this isn't our last time either. I would love to have you back on. Um, absolutely yeah. enjoyed our conversation, even before recording. Um, love that as well. So yeah. uh, I hope we could stay in touch, my friend. But uh, oh, thank yeah. you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely, brother. So I appreciate it. You know, you take care and, and you'll be safe. And yeah, I'll, I'll absolutely be in touch with you. Likewise, my friend. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.